Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Mr. G, and I'm a poet. And I've been working in prisons for like the last 12 years, um, doing like workshops, uh, exchanging ideas and poems and stuff like that. And during that time, I've met many fascinating individuals, most of whom are struggling with their mental health, both inside and outside. And so the piece that I've written called Room Service. It's based around a series of conversation with this guy that I met, and um, he was a brilliant poet, like brilliant, you know, just naturally just poured out these wonderful just sentences and paragraphs and phrases. It just came from within. Um, what would take me three days to write, he could just do in three hours. He just, he just had it like that. But beyond his pretty words, there was a lot more going on. So, this is room service. <sighs> These four walls know me well. They fornicate with the ebb and flow of my sobriety they reproduce my passion with persistence. Their wanton need offers up a gift to my contemplation. I love these walls, so I embrace these walls, for they are my own self-righteous angles, my four-sided conversation with singular intent. They abide with me to protect them from that frenzied circular wank fest that people lovingly refer to as the outside world. For I know these walls, they hold me well. I've navigated their inconsistency, which mirrors my very own. I've critiqued the texture of their loneliness, which forms the basis of my home. I've peeled back the wallpapering of past odious design, running my fingertips along each needless groove, replicating their epiphany. And in turn, I've reconstructed my own mosaic, embroidered my own flag, saluted my own national anthem. Control has been taken aback, temporary to say the least, but still fully functional. Though partly torn, though partly worn from misplaced alignment, where the death of free will begins with the minute sound of tapping fingers, pressing and depressing with equal urgency. So I cling on to these four walls. They fuel my poetry. Isn't my speech not beautiful? Composed, measured, marvelous. That's what I keep telling my therapist, Chloe. She doesn't get it. She keeps on advising me to get out more, communicate more. Mikey, you should step out. It'll be so good for your well-being. Mikey, you're doing so well in just being good. Go outside. What for? To socialize? To indulge in the delights of activated charcoal? <laughs> to be welcome to your weekly yo yoga class? Shit, I can't even afford a welcome mat. Goddamn posh white women always think they can mindfulness their way out of every situation. <laughs> Jeez. Not everything has a complicated theory, you know, Chloe. It's quite simple. There are two reasons why men don't talk about things. Either it means nothing to them, or everything. Do you actually listen to what folks are saying out there? I don't need to venture out into that climate to ingest the madness that's buzzing inside people's skulls. My western wall has got a window that's in touch with the outside. That's why it holds coldness. It retains the anxiety from yesteryear and echoes its ancient howl with interest. And if you're not prepared to engage with that anger, Chloe, and appreciate what people are really feeling inside, how are you ever going to listen to me? Shit, maybe it's true what they say. 
Too much kale just twists up your brain. <laughs> you see, the official diagnosis they have for me is institutional syndrome. That's to say, a deficit in social and life skills which develops after a person has spent a long period of time living in a remote institution. Obviously, there are cultural factors that will need to be considered in order to assist the subject with their future, in future integration. In other words, I'm black, broke, unemployed, and unemployable. Then there was that dumb referral report that said, Michael's self-imposed alienation may lead to psychological damage and a lessening of self-esteem which further fuels his agoraphobic tendencies. Agoraphobic. A fear of the outside. Chloe, this is bullshit. You know it's bullshit. I know it's bullshit. <laughs> Show me the posh yoga class that's going to bring justice to people who look like me. People who sound like me. People who've been where I've been, who've done what I've done, who've lost what, lost what I've lost. Damn it, Chloe. I've already told you that I still love her. What more do you want me to say? They say that men don't open up. But I speak to these four walls every day. Because the cracks inside the buildings and the people are both the same. And these bricks, at least these bricks are willing to listen to what I've got to say. Because there was a time when you used to be mine. And heaven I would find behind your warm and loving smile. And all the while, I'll say it outrightly. Your beauty shines brightly. With its exotic delight, see the erotic excites me. I still want it to invite me. I still want it despite the situation that keeps us apart. There was a time I used to watch you as you slept. And quiet as it was kept, I couldn't help but get erect because my fantasy was to enter your dreams, protect you from nightmares and screams because you were my queen. And we'd build each other's esteem and so it seemed for years that any of your fears that I know and find, I will hold you and not let go of you until your tears will flow with mine as we grow in time. And we didn't just make love, we made perfection. Even God was jealous above of the ecstasy of our sex and when you called out my name, I could feel my erection touch your inner pain and heal all its tension. Indeed, it seemed so long ago when we were afraid when we spoke to hang up on the phone. And for one day, I couldn't cope with just being alone. Nowadays, I just hope that you remember me so. Because I loved you so. I placed no one above you so. But my jealousy turned any man I see into an enemy. All the attention you had I would need and wanted for me. And possessiveness drove me mad and haunted my scene. But it was justified by my pride and your love that I fiend. But. Who's that motherfucker that you've been talking to? Have you been fucking with him after fucking me too? You better pray his luck don't run slim, because I will never hit you, but I will fucking slice him. You better tell him to move. Mm -hmm. Baby, can't you see I really need you? And I know you really need me to really complete you. And no one loves you like me, and all these people that whisper shit in your ear don't know how to treat you. I can be the father that you never had. I know the nights that your mom's bawled and it made you so mad that there's no one to answer your calls when you cried out for dad. You see, I've lived through it all so I know where it's at. But don't fucking go and play games with my feelings if I find out there's someone else you may have been dealing with. 
I'll fucking splatter him to the floor from the ceiling with. These fists will break his jaw without feeling shit. (laughs) You don't know the kind of man that you're dealing with. There was a time when you used to be mine. And when our bodies intertwined, my tongue would fondly lick in time. With the hidden rhythms of your mind, but now those days are far behind. Deep in my mind, I dare to find a clue on who now shares your time. Can you ever forgive me for my crimes? You must believe me, I never thought that he'd die. But I couldn't so easily let go of my pride and now the guilt won't release me. I'm so lonely inside. When I sit within these four walls, I tend to cry. As I ask myself why. When I'm remembering when time was better when there was a time. (laughs) 